Welcome, and welcome back to our Stories Read Aloud channel, Storytime with Little Book Nook. Today we are collaborating with a talented Charlotte Riggle, who is sharing with us her kid's book, The St. Nicholas Day Snow. Who is St. Nicholas, you might be wondering? Let's read together and find out. Stick around to the end of the video for a fun animation. Mom says I have to pick up all the blocks before Elizabeth comes over. I tell her there are always blocks on the floor at Elizabeth's house. But she says it doesn't matter. I have to pick them up anyway. I don't mind, though, because Elizabeth is going to stay at our house all day today. And she's going to spend the night tonight. Her parents are going to visit her Nana. And she's staying with us. Mom! I shout, Mom, is Elizabeth going to help us make St. Nicholas cookies? Yes, of course, Mom says. We'll make snowball cookies this morning. You and Elizabeth can help. I hear a car in the driveway. Elizabeth is here. I hear a car in front of our house. Elizabeth is here, I shout. Elizabeth and her mom come in. My dad goes out to help Elizabeth's dad bring in all her stuff. We are going to make snowball cookies, I tell Elizabeth. Can we have a snowball fight, asks Peter. No, silly, Elizabeth says. You can't have a snowball fight because there isn't any snow. But it could snow, says Peter. It could, says Elizabeth's dad. The weather forecast says rain, but I wanted to get an early start just in case it snows. Elizabeth's mom and dad give her hugs and kisses before they go. Tell Nana I love her, Elizabeth says. Mom gives us apples and graham crackers. If you have a snack now, you won't eat all the chocolate chips before we put them in the cookies, she says. Make sure you save some apples for St. Nicholas' horse, says Elizabeth. St. Nicholas doesn't have a horse, says Peter. He has a reindeer. When he comes to our house, he has a horse, says Elizabeth. Mom says that people tell a lot of stories about St. Nicholas. In some stories, he comes on Christmas Eve and has reindeer. In other stories, he comes on St. Nicholas Eve and has a horse. Will he come here tonight? Elizabeth asks. No, says Peter. He comes to our house on Christmas. Sometimes, says Mom. But since Elizabeth is here, I expect he'll be here tonight too. Elizabeth smiles. Can we put out apples and carrots for his horse? She asks. Of course, says mom. Mom gets out all the ingredients for the cookies. I get out the cups and the spoons. Mom runs the mixer while Elizabeth and I take turns measuring the ingredients and dumping them into a bowl. What if St. Nicholas can't find me? Elizabeth asks. He'll find you, says mom. Pretty soon, the cookie racks are full of warm chocolate cookies. They smell so good. Mom lets us each eat one while it's warm. We'll decorate them when they're cool, she says. Can I help decorate the cookies? asks Peter. No, says Dad. You are going to your godparents' house. We can't get everyone to church in our car tomorrow, so you're going to spend the night with them. Yay, says Peter. That's better than cookies. When we eat lunch, Elizabeth tells me that she always has candy and treats in her shoes when she gets up on St. Nicholas Day. I tell her that my parents always give Peter and me Christmas books on St. Nicholas Day. What does St. Nicholas put in your shoes? Elizabeth asks. He doesn't put anything in our shoes, Peter says. We get candy and stuff in our stockings because St. Nicholas put gold in some girl's stockings. He did not, says Elizabeth. He put gold in their shoes. Stockings, says Peter. Shoes, says Elizabeth. Hold on, kids, says Mom. It was stockings, says Peter. 
Mom gives him her look. He stares back at her, then looks down. Sorry, he says. We're still eating when Peter's godfather knocks on the door. Hi, Andrew, says Mom. Come on in. Tell them, Nano, says Peter. Tell them it was stockings. It was not, says Elizabeth. It was shoes. Uncle Andrew looks confused. Stockings? Shoes? Tell Elizabeth, Nano. Tell her that St. Nicholas put gold in their stockings. Their shoes, says Elizabeth. He put gold in their shoes. Uncle Andrew laughs. (laughs) It sounds like you two are in different versions of the story, he says. That's okay. There are lots of ways to tell it. Do you want to hear the way my daddy told me? Peter and Elizabeth look at each other, and then they smile. Yes, we say together. Uncle Andrew's stories are the best. Uncle Andrew sits down at the table. You all know the first part, he says. When St. Nicholas was young, he had a poor neighbor who had three daughters. And the neighbor's oldest daughter was going to sell herself as a slave so there would be money for her sisters to get married, right? Right, says Peter. Elizabeth and I nod. St. Nicholas didn't want that to happen. So he slipped to their house in the middle of the night and tossed a bag of gold in through the window. And the gold landed right in the oldest girl's shoe. But it made such a loud noise that it woke up the girls and their father and the dog and the chickens. And St. Nicholas barely got away. See, it was shoes, says Elizabeth. Later on, says Uncle Andrew, St. Nicholas decided to go back with more gold so the second daughter could marry too. This time, he decided to be very, very quiet. What did he do, I ask? He peeked in and he saw that the girls had hung their stockings by the window. So he reached in through the window and he slipped the gold into one of the stockings. Stockings, says Peter to Elizabeth. And the third time, of course, the father caught St. Nicholas outside his house. So that gold didn't go in a shoe or a stocking. St. Nicholas just handed it to the man and asked him not to tell anyone. But he told, I say, yes, he told his daughters and his daughters told their friends. And one said that St. Nicholas put gold in her shoe and the other said that he put gold in her stockings. So you're both right, says Uncle Andrew standing up. And you need to go get your overnight bag. He looks at mom. It started snowing when I was coming over. And I want to get home before the sidewalks are too buried. It's snowing, Peter says. We all jump up from the table and run to the door. It's snowing, I say. Dad comes to the door and looks at the sky. I think I'll get my coat and go run my errands now, Dad says, just in case it keeps snowing. After Peter and Uncle Andrew and Dad leave, Elizabeth and I go outside and catch snowflakes on our mittens. The flakes are getting bigger. Can St. Nicholas ride his horse in the snow? I ask Elizabeth. I don't know, she says, but if he can't, maybe he'll bring his reindeer. I think about that one. We'll have to leave extra apples, I say, just in case it keeps snowing. Elizabeth starts shivering, so we go inside. Mom makes hot chocolate for us. While Elizabeth and I finish our hot chocolate, Mom puts the cookies out on a wire rack on the table. We'll work here, she says. Catherine, you'll glaze the cookies. Elizabeth, you'll roll the cookies in coconut. While we work, I look out the window. The snowflakes look like giant feathers falling down. When we're done, I want to make a snowman, I say. There's not enough snow for a snowman, Mom says. Maybe we'll be able to scrape together enough snow for a snow elf. Is it snowing where Nana is? Elizabeth asks Mom. It might be, says Mom. 
When your mom calls, we'll ask her. What if St. Nicholas thinks I'm at Nana's house? Elizabeth asks. Are you worried about that? Asks mom. Or are you worried about your Nana? Elizabeth is quiet for a moment. Then she says, Both. Would you like to pray for your Nana? Mom asks. Elizabeth nods. We go to the icon corner, and Mom lights the candles and the incense. Then we make the cross and say the Lord's Prayer, and then Mom says the prayer for the sick. At the end of the prayer, Mom says, Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, especially St. Nicholas, the wonder maker of Myra, we all say, Amen. Elizabeth blows out the candles. When Dad comes in, he stamps snow off his shoes and shakes snow off his hat. This seems to be turning into a regular snowstorm, he says. Mom, I say, Mom, when should we put our shoes out for St. Nicholas? When do you put your shoes out, Mom asks Elizabeth. We always do it right before bedtime, she says. Well then, Mom says, that's what we'll do. But what if he doesn't come? asks Elizabeth. He'll come, Mom says. After evening prayers, Elizabeth and I sit down by the kitchen door and take off our shoes. Mom hands us each an apple and a carrot. We put a carrot in one shoe and an apple in the other one. Dad opens the kitchen door. Big fat snowflakes are still falling outside. The grass and the swings are all covered in snow. I think we need more carrots, I tell mom. Why? she asks. Because St. Nicholas might have to bring his reindeer, Elizabeth says. Dad looks at the snow. You have a point, he says. He gives us more carrots. We put the shoes outside in the snow. While mom helps Elizabeth in the bathroom, I get my flashlight and my Christmas books and hide them under the blankets. After we get in bed, Mom kisses each of us on top of our head. Good night, girls, she says, turning off the light. Enjoy the books. Good night, Mom, I say. Does she always know you're going to read after bedtime? Elizabeth asks. I think she knows everything, I say. And Elizabeth and I read Christmas stories until we fall asleep. Wake up, girls, says Mom. I rub my eyes. Elizabeth pushes herself up. Would you like pancakes and cookies for breakfast? Breakfast, I say. We can't have breakfast. We're going to church. We cannot go to church this morning, Mom says. There's too much snow. I look out the window. The snow must be a hundred feet deep. Can we make a snowman, I ask. What about Nana, Elizabeth asks. Mom sits down on the bed. I just talked to your mom, Elizabeth. Your Nana is fine. Your parents are going to stay another night with your Nana because of the snow. That means you get to spend one more night with us. Elizabeth stares at mom. She's really okay? She asks. Yes, says mom. She's really okay. Elizabeth takes a deep breath and then she throws her arms around mom. She's okay. Nana's okay. Can we make a snowman? I ask again. Let's have cookies first, Elizabeth says. When we get downstairs, Dad is making pancakes. Happy St. Nicholas Day, I say. Happy St. Nicholas Day, says Dad. Elizabeth opens the kitchen door and pulls the shoes inside. Look, Catherine, she says. The shoes are full of oranges and chocolate coins and candy canes and snow. And look, I say, St. Nicholas left books too, even ones for you and Peter. We'll say prayers after breakfast, Mom says, and then we can go outside and make a snowman. Can we make a snow bishop and a snow horse, I ask. I don't know how to make a snow horse, Mom says, but we can try. Mm -hmm.